Welcome into this week's episode of Cape Codcast. I'm your host, Emma Carmen. We are so excited to welcome in Steve Peralt to today's podcast. Steve is a senior producer of MLB content at Odyssey Sports, the creator of Ballpark Kicks, and a former host of Section 10 Podcast. Steve, thank you so much for coming on this afternoon. Super excited to have you on. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I got to say, I'm very excited that Ballpark Kicks was included uh, in the intro. I care so much about sneakers, and we're trying to do a lot more with that account this year. So that was probably my favorite part of the intro, I got to say. Love it. And you know what? Guess who was your 2000th follower? You were? Oh, really? Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's huge. <laughs> I know. Now, hopefully, hopefully somebody doesn't drop off now. Then it's going to go back to one. <laughs> but still, 2000 is pretty good, I was. Right? Yes. Emma Carmen was your 2000th follower. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we need. That we're trying awesome. to get to the, the 10K spot. Like, I know at 10K, you can do like, you know, ads and swipe ups and all that. We're trying to get to that really cool 10K number. So hopefully it happens this year. 2022 is the year for that. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. All right. Awesome. So obviously huge Cape Cod baseball league fan, you know, you've been to all the fields a lot of the games. How did this all come about and where did it all start? Yeah, it all started um, kind of with my dad. Honestly, uh, we've had a house in Harwich or did for a long time from like 1997 uh, all the way until a couple of years ago. And so growing up, I just kind of knew that the Cape League was just part of the summer experience. It was like, we're going to be on the Cape. I don't care about the beach. The beach is like, we could, we could do a whole podcast on how overrated the beach overrated. is. I don't want to <laughs> go there. But I understand a lot of people love to go to the Cape for the beach. I love going there to play mini golf, uh, go to Dairy Queen, and go to Cape League games. That's literally all I need in my life. So early on, I was probably, what, six, seven, eight. That was like the first experiences I had with the Cape League. And I fell in love with it. I mean, it's, it's unlike anything else. I feel like my favorite part from then until now is that you can go to these parks and still feel like a kid. Like it's the same experience you had. And my dad still handles the donations, which is guys should probably chip in more. I got to start donating a little more <laughs> at the front gates, but it's always the same process, right? It's like you, you bring your seat. We would always bring our seats, our fold out seats. Yep. And, you know, sometimes night before, if it was a playoff game, and you set them up and you put yourself in the best position to just enjoy like authentic baseball. There's nothing quite like being on the Cape in the summer, those June, July games, specifically July, because that's the one full month you get of Cape League baseball. Um, and yeah, rooting on the team, you know, that I grew up rooting for, which is the Harwich Mariners. So uh, not a lot of great, you know, circumstances earlier on. They would normally not even make the playoffs. They finally win it in 2008, which was awesome. But um, that's where it started. It started with my dad getting a house in Harwich because he would always fix up houses. Right. And, you know, he kind of did a fixer upper deal in, in Harwich. We had a couple of cottages and your classic, you know, Cape cottage type of setup. Yeah, of course. And yeah, you, you do the whole, you know, family goes to the beach in the, in the afternoon, you come home, do the cookout, and then you go to a Cape League game. Nothing, nothing's better than that. that is what a peak. good day. <laughs> oh, it's the best. So that, that's day. where it all started. Got it. So you mentioned, you know, 1997, obviously 2022 now time flies. What is Ridiculous. the biggest, I know you mentioned still pretty similar vibes, but what is the biggest transformation that you've noticed, you know, from going to those games as a younger kid to now? Uh, the scouts. I, I think the scout count is the biggest difference I noticed earlier on. Granted, when I'm eight, I'm not like looking for scouts. I don't even <laughs> think I knew what they were, yeah. but early on, I, I, I would notice this because we would always, my dad and I would always try to set up seats behind home plate, uh, whether it was the night before or that afternoon before we went to the beach or went to, you know, do something, mini golf or whatever. And you realize that if you set it up early enough, you're in a good spot. As the years go on, behind the plate is Scout City. Now you can't just sit back there. You have all these guys. They all have the same outfit, kind of what I'm wearing right now. It's all the quarter zip with the Nike hat. And they all talk like, oh, hey, hey Jim, how you doing? Like, they all have the same they got the binder um, with the slacks, like the Lulu slacks. Like they, they have it down to a T. And I just noticed that number started going up and up and up every year. And I don't know. I would love to talk to more Cape League players. I'm going to try to do that this year. And I want to know how, how much they notice that. Because you, you feel like every game, it's like, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. There's like 15 guys behind the plate that could dictate the rest of my life. That could like literally be the, they could be the difference between me and being a millionaire or, you know, having to find a new job. So 
I think that was the biggest thing I noticed. Um, also, and this is something that's kind of bugged me, but I don't really like, it's my only real gripe with the Cape league is that they <laughs> had to change some of the, uh, MLB team names. And it's not even a gripe with the Cape league. It's a gripe with major league baseball. Um, because they made like, you know, the Orleans Cardinals become the Orleans firebirds. Uh, the wet, I'm trying to think of some other ones, Hyannis Mets, the Harbor Hawks. Yes. So I love the connection with the MLB team names. I know the Harwich Mariners are still the Harwich Mariners, which is good. Um, but I think MLB said that you had to give a prof a percentage of the profit to them. If you wanted to keep the name, it was a whole thing. So I didn't love that, especially considering that the Cape league provides top tier talent for their scouts and for free. So that kind of bugged me a little bit, but yeah, I would say the team names changing made me feel a little old. I was like, I, I, I remember when they were the Cardinals. Sonny in boy. 1990s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, let me tell you, I was a little boy in the nineties. Um, so I remember that. Uh, but yeah, the scouts, I, I think it's, it's become the Cape league has become more national. I think it was more local earlier on. Yeah. Um, you had kids from around the country, but it was a more like people around here were super passionate about it. And now, Dangerous. you know, you'll, yeah. yeah, exactly. But well, now you'll have, sometimes they'll have games on Nesson. If, yeah. if, if the socks are off, sometimes they put Cape league games on Nesson. So it's become a bigger deal for sure. Great too. Good exposure for everyone. hundred percent. So obviously family connection. I have to know, do the, do parents still go to the game? Do they love it down there? Do they go? Yeah. So my dad, you know, still doing the whole fixer upper thing. He's retired. Okay. He's still turning houses around. And so the next, the new project he's on is a house in Chatham and uh, growing up, going to Chatham A's games, that was my favorite part. I, I love the setup there. They used to have this huge playground, Splinter City, by the way. It's all wooden. <laughs> so, like, that was brutal. But you had to earn your, your stripes. You'd get splinters. You'd keep playing tag. You knew. Um, so, I, yeah, you had, yeah, you, that's how you earned it with, you know, little Johnny and Susie. But, like, I, I love doing that and going to that park. So, I like that we're, you know, that we still have a house down there uh, and that we're, we'll still get to the games. In all honesty, it was tough because, like, I was – you know, between doing work with Barstool with Section 10 and working full-time with Bleacher Report, it was in New York City the last five years. I'm finally back in Boston working for Odyssey, but it made it, it, made it very difficult to get to the Cape uh, in the summer, which is like, boo-hoo, you couldn't go to your little Cape house. But like, I, it, it did make it hard uh, to get back for Cape League games, which is 100% the number one reason why I would want to be on, on Cape Cod. Uh, so hopefully this summer I'll, I'll be able to get to a lot more games and um, experience it more. But yeah, my, my parents and specifically my dad is, is always been obsessed with the Cape league and tries to get to as many games as possible. And I was be like, Oh, Steven, you know, I, I, he's got a breakdown on everybody. He's like, this is kid from Brewster that you, you got to see. He's I wonderful. Love it. So yeah, it's, it's he all, probably it's, has a better scouting report than anyone else. <laughs> exactly. And it's also like the, the best part about that is it's the Cape league is one of the last remaining sports things. that's like word of mouth. They're like, oh, you got to see this kid from Orleans. And because so, you don't always see the clips on Twitter or Instagram, uh, a lot of minor league teams now have top tier social teams yeah. that get stuff out and that have a whole YouTube channel. Cape League, I think is, I kind of love that it's still, you know, your best experience is at the game. It's not just relying on their Twitter account to show you everything. So I do like yeah. that. Love that. So you mentioned Chatham, one of your favorite ballparks. So I had to go through your Twitter and, you know, see what you wrote about the Cape. So you mentioned Chatham and Katuit. What do you like so much about those and why do those stand out compared to some of the others? You did research. I, I oh, always yeah. love that. Anytime <laughs> I'm hosting a show, you got to do the research. Um, oh, yeah. Chad, I think Chatham uh, is the nostalgia one. Chatham's mm -hmm. the one that it's like you remember late 90s, early thousands going to games there. Um, it just had that that park has more of a major league, not a major league feel, but more of like a oh, it matters more here kind of feel. Like, I'm not going to name names. There's a couple of Cape League parks that I just don't really like that much. But I think everyone has their, their favorites and their, you know, the ones they don't really go to as, as much. But um, Chatham always gave me that vibe of like, this is the Cape League. I know Summer Catch is like, it's, it's I could say a lot about Summer Catch. It's not the <laughs> best movie, but it still is, it, it reminds me of Summers on the Cape. And then it has that Chatham vibe to it, which is good. Uh, Katuit is just gorgeous. Like yeah. that field is beautiful. It's the setup. And I, I love, it has a field of dreams feel to it where it's just boom, all of a sudden you're just there. It's just like in the kind of in the middle of, of just the neighborhood, you're just kind of driving around and it's like, Oh, take a left here. And you know, one of the best looking parks in the Cape is just right there. So I love that. Also got to, um, you know, meet a couple of the people that worked for the Ketteliers last year. They were going to have me throw out a first pitch of a playoff game. Uh, cause I threw out a first pitch for Bourne, which was great. Yeah. Love doing that. Mm -hmm. And then apparently it was a, a rule that Katuit had 
where you have to be affiliated with the team to throw out the first pitch, like either like a parent of a player yeah. or like you used to play for the team. And obviously I didn't, you know, play for the Kettleers. So <laughs> um, that, you know, I, they felt terrible about it too. Cause I think one of the, one of their like interns had reached out. I was like, we would love to also have you throw out a first pitch. Cause it was born versus Katuit. So I was going to throw yeah. out the first pitch in like back-to-back days. And so instead they had me and I, I was like, it's all good. Don't worry about it. They were so apologetic. They're like, sorry, it's just a rule. We're going to get rid of the rule. I'm like, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. And I, I got to hop on the radio call they had and, yeah. uh, you know, check out the booth and everything. And it was really neat. So uh, Katuit and Chatham just kind of feel at a different level, honestly. And uh, the other ones are all great. Orleans is still great too. I love Orleans and the huge hill they have there. That's awesome. So can't really go wrong um, with most of them, but Katuit and Chatham are the top two. Yeah. Love that. There's also always, always little teams that need work in progress on the field. That's yes. just life. <laughs> it's fair. It's fair. Yes. So you mentioned, um, I know last summer able to call a game with the Curry twins in Katuit. Um, yeah. you just mentioned that, but how kind of was that experience? Obviously they were the two men behind the mic for them doing play by play color, all that. Just what was it like calling that game with them? It was hilarious. First off, cause <laughs> I walk in there. I'm like, you guys are taller than me. What are we doing? These guys are like NBA centers. Uh, obviously they have baseball in their blood, uh, with, you know, their, their relationship to their dad and grandfather, but, um, that, that was awesome for multiple reasons. First off the booth there is legit. Like I, I know it's still like a Cape league setup, so it's not huge, mm-hmm. but you go up to that second level there, you get a great view that I had never seen before. And it just feels professional. It feels like you're calling like maybe a minor league game. Like it's a step up maybe from the Cape. Um, but it was, it was fun. It was a ton of fun to do that. I mean, I'm, I'm 31 now. So I'm like, I, it's just funny to me because I look at these guys and I see a lot of like the drive I had when I was like 17, 18, 19, you know, in that range of like, I just want to, I hope I can make it one day. And so like, it's (laughs) nice to see them have that same love of baseball. Like I really get obsessed with people that obsess over baseball. I love talking about it, uh, breaking down prospects, breaking down the quirky stuff of the game. And it really brings me joy to see, you know, these dudes uh, in high school, college that just care at the same level. And that it's like, it's their game. Baseball's in their blood, like I mentioned. And you can kind of feel that too. They have, I mean, I think they overdress a little bit. I got to say, I, and I I mentioned that to them too. I was like, you guys can have the Katua polo. You don't need to be full suit and tie up here. Like we can Behind lighten it mic. up. I know. I'm like, we can lighten it up. It's not like we're on TV here. I think we can loosen up a little bit, but um, the setup there was great. I remember another thing I loved about it is they had uh, the Sox game on because they were playing in Toronto. And, and so they had a TV up there and they were kind of watching that while, you know, in between innings. So two and um, one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So That's it awesome. was, that was a fun experience. I really enjoyed that. That's great. Uh, you also mentioned first pitch in born one. Was it a strike? Uh, yeah. It wasn't, it was a little high, but you'd rather throw a high pitch than in the dirt. Oh, 100%. Second, you, yeah, second, you throw a pitch in the dirt. You look yeah. like a scrub. You don't want to do that. It was a little high, but again, I hadn't been on a mound since high school. So it had been a while. It had been since like whatever, Oh, six, Oh seven. And so I'm like, just have it be good enough. I was trying to hype the crowd up beforehand. Um, I love that. Well, then, but then you realize it's like, oh, damn, I have to actually throw the pitch. Like, I know it sounds obvious. It's the first pitch, but Adrenaline. you get on the mound and it's like, oh, God, like it's, you know, you have MLB prospects looking at you right now to throw a pitch. And I'm nervous as all could be. But um, yeah, it was a ball. It was a ball, but it was, if it was framed a little better, I'm not going to blame the catcher. If it was framed a little better, it could have been a strike. Got it. <laughs> the biggest thing, you got the 15 scouts behind you watching too. Yep. You got yeah. everyone looking at you, fresher. <laughs> yeah. Um, so during that summer of 2020, obviously when the Cape League was not able to play, saw you went to a lot of the ballparks, you know, were able to check those out. No fans. Obviously the Cape was way quieter than normal. Um, what were you able to kind of experience and see with that whole kind of route of all the fields and everything? Yeah, I mean, that was, as we all were doing in the summer of 2020, just trying to find any form of entertainment. Uh, it obviously helped that it finally warmed up. I know when the pandemic started, it was still freezing, and you get to the point of summer. Obviously, the very sad news, the Cape League is canceled. That that was tough. I think that was tough for a lot of people that rely on the Cape as one of their go-to summer events, and on the Cape League specifically. And uh, I just wanted to do... I'm always thinking content. I'm trying to come out, you know, you want to do as many like segment ideas and and possible things you can do for your own Instagram to grow the brand. 
And so I'm like, you know what, let's do a little Cape League Park tour. And I would incorporate the sneakers too, because I wanted to do stuff for ballpark kicks. And so I'd wear a different pair of sneakers each time. I'd go to the park. Sometimes there were some kids at some of the playground. A lot of them have like playgrounds nearby. Um, And so, but it was really just me. And I, I think that's what I loved about it. It's that I have so many memories at these parks. And it was kind of just like a peaceful experience to go to these parks by myself. Uh, middle of the day like these are when games would be in high speed this would be like bottom of the fifth and I'm taking a picture of my sneakers on the mound so it was uh it was really cool I I didn't get to all of them I think there were a couple uh Wareham I didn't I didn't get out to Wareham um and I believe Falmouth but I've seen them before but I wasn't able to have it in this little series but got eight out of ten uh did a lot of photos kind of did my little breakdown of you know the ups and downs of each place and it was it was peaceful in a time that I know we're technically still in the pandemic and, you know, things are obviously COVID just doesn't want to go away, but um, that was the, that was really the core of it. So it was nice to actually kind of have a change of pace and have something that, you know, wasn't just dragging you down all the time and negative news every day. So yeah, no, I'm, I'm by myself at, at the Chatham field. I'm at, I'm at peace with this. This is nice. So looking it all um, in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah. it was cool to kind of look around and act as if I was actually in the Cape so, yeah, That's great. It. Hey, close your eyes and you can imagine anything. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, so you mentioned obviously ballpark kicks for those of yeah. us watching, listening, what exactly did, how did this idea come about power? You know, like how did you say, I want to run an Instagram one day or a page where I'm just wearing cool kicks and posting different stuff all over the, you know, country eventually. Yeah. No, hundred percent. It's uh, it really started when I was working at Bleacher Report, the sneaker culture there is insane. Uh, I would say unhealthy. It was a point in 2017 where everyone's trying to up each other's sneaker game. And it was getting to the point where it's like, I'm spending all my money on sneakers. This is very (laughs) bad. And the sneaker culture in New York city is next level. It's, like the, the best compliment I can get, there's no words involved. It's another guy seeing my sneakers and giving me the nod. If you get the head nod walking down the street in Manhattan for your sneakers, you did something right. Normally it's always in. Jordan. <laughs> yeah, 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 normally you have to have Jordans. Uh, and I know you would know the Jordan connection well with Oregon, but yeah. <laughs> it's, um, it's yeah, I, I think it's it was more just the thing of, of combining two of my loves, which is sneakers and baseball. And I realized that, uh, BR kicks was a page they started around like 2016 and now has a couple million followers. I know the guys that are guys and girls that are behind that. Um, mm-hmm. and they do an incredible job, but it's very NBA, very basketball based. I realized that some of the players I've gotten to meet in, in, on the Red Sox and other teams, uh, love sneakers, but there's not like that sneaker culture in baseball, uh, like custom cleats haven't really been a thing much past the last like three years. It's really been like a recent thing. So, I feel like the timing of it was good. I would always just take pictures of my sneakers at the park anyway. So I'm like, let's just make an account, like might yeah. as well. Um, and people get into it. Like the hashtag ballpark kicks on Twitter uh, and Instagram, just people just send them in all over. Like 2019, it really blew up. And it, it, it was tough that 2020, you lost a lot of momentum because no one could go to the games. And it was like, <laughs> made it a li- yeah, made it a little bit different. But, uh, you know, did my best last year to kind of, get it back in, in, in rhythm and, and got to interview some players at all-star weekend in Denver about their sneaker collections. And some of them have up to 500 pairs wow. and it's just, it's insane. So this year we're trying to do more content, mm-hmm. um, you know, get players to give us kind of a peek at their sneaker closets and, and do more of that video uh, content for the page. But yeah, it's been a lot of fun and it's any excuse for me to get another pair of sneakers. I'll never shoot that down. So yeah, absolutely it's, not. it's incentive to buy new sneakers, which my mom would hate, but um but Lots yeah it's, it's <laughs> ex- exactly it's something that you got to always add to the collection and and I love doing it okay so I have to ask what's your f- absolute favorite pair uh I've gotten into the custom sneaker game I wouldn't recommend it to anybody uh that doesn't want to be bankrupt it is <laughs> <A little pricey. laughs> it is expensive um but I wore these went to the Bruins last night I wore these I wear these a lot actually they're Toy Story Jordan ones uh that I got done I wore them at the all-star game in Denver And at Fenway a couple of times, the left shoe is devoted to Woody. uh, So it's more of the cowboy theme has both of them have the pizza planet logo on the back because I wanted that badly. And the right shoe is devoted to Buzz Lightyear. Um, And I I just love wearing them. And normally people point them out the most. A lot of kids do. And so I was walking back into my uh, kind of apartment complex last night. And this, you know, this kid couldn't have been any older than four years old. 
just he's with his dad holding his hand. He points to him, he goes, I love your shoes. And I was like, that is that's it almost made me get a little misty. I was like, <laughs> that is the cutest thing of all time. Uh, so I love that. I, I, I love, you know, connecting with any kind of audience that's going to be like, that's really cool. And the custom sneakers are so fun because it's like you really get to wear your personality like on your shoes. Like if, if Jordan comes out with a cool Jordan three um, or, you know, Reebok last summer came out with the Jurassic Park theme. Uh, that's, those are kicks I like to get, but like anyone can get those when you get like the custom ones they are only your sneakers. I'm like, these you. are just for me. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm the only one that has these. So it's, yeah. it's kind of ridiculous that we always sneaker heads love bragging, but, um, yeah, it'll be between the toy story ones. And then, uh, this guy, his name's actually Mike Jordan. He's a sneaker customizer. He did Jurassic park, uh, Jordan ones for me that I love as well. So, um, yeah, those, the, the custom ones, my girlfriend got me that are at Fenway park. It's hard to beat any custom sneaker. I got to say, it, it's like, once you get into this, this game, it's hard to get out. Uh, cause it's kind of an addiction. So trap. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it is really a trap. So we'll see what the next ones are, but I'm trying to spread them out as much as possible. So awesome. Well, I can't wait to see where that goes. Everyone follow, you know, ballpark kicks on Instagram. If you have not, 100%. um, yeah. So obviously, uh, you know, you're now with Odyssey Sports. We're at Section 10. You know, how has that been? Like, like what's a day in the life of Steve for MLB content at Odyssey Sports? Yeah, as of right now, we have a, uh, a relationship with Major League Baseball where we work with every MLB team-generated podcast. And so uh, my day-to-day, -day, outside of trying to grow this Red Sox show that we're going to launch in spring training, which I'm insanely excited about, mm -hmm. Uh, the team has been super supportive. We meet with them on like a biweekly basis. Uh, they're going to provide social support and everything. Can't wait for that. But we basically work with each team and pick their brains on like what podcast concept they want to work on, uh, you know, what's worked for them in the past. And we're just trying to make it so that it's, you know, we can improve it the, to the best capability that we have and get them to a point where they feel like they're growing and continuing to, get, to build an audience, which Got to be honest, I think the biggest challenge right now and the line I hate hearing is, oh, everybody has a podcast. Yeah, everybody has a podcast, but a lot of them stink. So <laughs> if you put the time into it, the effort into it, you have production support and all that, then you can maybe get to a point where it's like, okay, this is something that's in people's little podcast homepage, uh, which at the end of the day is the goal. So yeah. we're trying to get these teams to the point where, you know, Mets fans, Yankees fans, Cubs fans all go to that team's podcast because they love the host. They love the content that's uh, produced. They love the vibe and, you know, how it's kind of a, uh, you know, a secondary thing on top of following the team. It's like, I also have the team's show that I love. So mm -hmm. it's kind of this, you know, supportive feature of something that you can listen to every week um, and contribute to as well. We want people to be as involved as possible listeners uh, with these shows. So that's kind of the the day-to-day -day for me, right. um, you know, since leaving section 10. Before that, it was a lot of work with Bleach Report. Um, and balancing that with section 10 was very difficult. That was a lot to do at once, but uh, I, I feel like it was a, a good you know, time to have a transition for me and, and take on this new challenge. And it's been great so far. That's awesome. You've done a lot, you know, been involved with the Cape been involved with ball park kicks, you know, now Odyssey. Um, okay. So before we wrap this up, I have to ask five rapid questions. You want to answer? Yes. Okay. Love the rapid questions. So right. we start off first, obviously you've been around the Cape for a while. Um, where is your favorite spot, whether it's a restaurant, beach, ballpark, anything, what's your absolute favorite go-to on the Cape? Pirates Cove. It's not even close. Uh, Pirates Cove mini golf. It's easily number one. Can't top it. Love it. All right. Yeah. If you could have one superpower, what would it be? Ooh, um, it would be to, let me, oh God, that's crazy. Um, let me think teleportation. I, I would like to just be in a different place. I hate flying. Yeah. So like, I want to go to some socks road trips this year. I just want to be there. I don't want to have to also, I mean, let's that, let's be honest, flight costs go up and that, yeah. that, that is ridiculous. So teleportation um, easy. Yeah. Boom. Just <laughs> immediately be somewhere else. Love it. All right. What's one thing people don't know about you? Wow. Um, that I like the bachelor. Uh, I, yeah, I, wa <laughs> I watched, I watched the bachelor. Uh, my girlfriend and I normally do a draft at the start of each season and wh whoever wins has to pay for a dinner or something. So, Medication. um, yeah, so I, I do like the bachelor, even though it's kind of a garbage show, but anyway. yeah, it's entertainment. It's fine. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you could spend an afternoon with any athlete in history, who would it be? Um, that's a great one. Probably Nomar Garcia-Para. Uh, I, I loved Nomar growing up. 
I think he was kind of done dirty by not just the team. I don't know if it was the team, but it's just the all encompassing way of how it went down when he got traded to the Cubs in 2004, that the fans kind of turned on him a little bit. That's why behind me, I have a authentic Cubs Jersey that I got signed by Nomar to show like, I'm still with you, Nomar. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would say Nomar. I would want to pick his brain on, on the late nineties, Red Sox on Pedro on the transition to getting them to be a world series team. Um, and then now his life now with, you know, last what, 20 years of Mia Hamm mm-hmm. and he is a Dodgers commentator, you know, his experiences in LA, I, I, no Mars, the pick for sure. Love it. All right. Last one. Do you have a baseball superstition or ritual that you've ever followed or before you go see a game, anything like that? Um, the biggest superstition I had, I'll, I'll do when I was playing because I could never step on the foul line. Just couldn't do it. Any, any foul line, third base side, first base side, couldn't step on the chalk. Second I did, I would just have a terrible game. It was, it became, it's in your head and it's like, I shouldn't have done that. Shouldn't have stepped on the chalk. And you're just thinking about it the rest of the game. Um, so I can't do that. Speaking of superstitions, I mean, Nomar had all the superstitions in the oh, world. Yeah. Tapping the toes, fixing the batting gloves and everything. So how, how um, many? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. But um, yeah, in, in playing days, I avoided the foul lines. Uh, and then, one. yeah, I don't know if there's any going to games. Uh, it's honestly, there's some people that are a little nuts with like, oh, I got to be in this seat. I got to have the hot dog in the third inning. Like, I don't know if I have anything <laughs> like that. I mean, it's more just making sure I, I try to wear a different pair of shoes, like each game, or at least keep that mix going, but wouldn't say it's a superstition. That's just more of kind of a go-to thing. Love it. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Steve. It was great to have you on here. Appreciate your time. Thank you for everything. We wish you nothing but the best of luck. We hope to see you this summer in the Cape. I'm super excited. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. And uh, yeah, can't wait for June. Can't wait for Cape League games to be back. Woo-hoo. This is Emma Carmen signing off from Cape League Podcast. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast as well as follow us on social media at official CCBL on Instagram and Twitter. Thank you for all watching and have a wonderful week. Thank you.